Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest in Europe. It's the capital of Hungary. I hope everybody has had a great week of staying healthy, staying strong, and looking forward to a good weekend. In this class, we are focusing on IELTS speaking part two, the cue card, and I'm going to teach you some steps to get those high band scores. Uh, these materials, these strategies, they come from com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there and join thousands of other students on their journey to get high bands and pass IELTS. For general IELTS, check us out at G-I-E-L-T-S-help.com. On both of these websites, we have lots of materials for you, including help for speaking. You can book speaking interviews with professionals, as well as practice your speaking for free with other IELTS students. In this class, also make sure to practice your speaking. So speak and repeat. Okay, it's very important that you're speaking English as much as possible. Hi, Hina. Hi, Jainil. Hi, Kyber. Good to see our members. Pachu. Nice to see you in class. Hi, Roshni. Good to see our regular students. Uh, students, you can download our apps, Academic IELTS Help. The app links with the web account, aehelp.com. For gieltshelp.com, download the app and link General IELTS Help from your app stores. If you have questions, just send me an email, uh, adrian at aehelp.com. I will gladly respond to your inquiries in due time. All right, everyone, uh, let's get into it. Just a quick peek at our websites. This is our academic website here at aehelp.com. You can click that big red button to join. When you do, there's lots of goodies, including speaking opportunities. Uh, here's General Isles green background. Click that red button to join there. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, today's question was sent to us, I believe, by Kyber, one of our members. Uh, one of the benefits of being a member is you can request classes, and I believe, Kyber, you sent us this question. And I believe this question comes from one of the past uh, IELTS uh, exams as well. Okay. Now, students, um, here's a quick tip to uh, kind of start you off. Don't try to predict um, the, uh, so this is just a tip. Okay. Um, do not try to predict the speaking interview topics. This is basically impossible. Okay. I know there are some videos online and there are some people that say, Hey, I know what topics they're going to ask in the next month or in the next two months. It's not true. Okay. The, uh, I really want all of the students to know that the topics for, uh, the speaking, the topics for writing, they're kept confidential. They're secret. They're not revealed to, uh, candidates until they sit the exam. So please don't believe these videos and people who tell you that, Hey, these are the topics for 2020 August. It's not true. Uh, they're just guessing. Okay. Uh, the only information that you know, basically is the questions will be either about a person, object, place, event, or idea, but within these categories, there can be millions of questions. Okay. So keep that in mind. So you really want to, uh, practice the right strategy, the right steps so that it doesn't matter what question they ask you. You feel ready. You feel confident. Okay. So most important here is strategy. Good strategy is much more important than guessing and practicing for specific topics. Okay. So that's the key here. All right. 
So what is good strategy? Well, good strategy starts with careful reading in part two in the cue card, okay? So uh, when you finish part one in your speaking interview, your speaking interview, of course, is made up of three parts. Part one will be about four or five minutes, uh, just some general questions to get to know you, maybe about hobbies, the weather, using a paper or pencil. Uh, so it could be a few different ideas for sure there as well. And then when you're finished part one, the examiner will say, okay, that's the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. For part two, here's a card with some questions on it. You will have one minute to think about your answers, uh, prepare notes if you wish. Here's some note paper and a pencil. And then you'll have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Uh, your one minute begins, preparation time begins now. Turn over the card and uh, please begin preparing, okay? All right, so you turn over the card and this is what you see, okay? So this is what you see uh, and of course, step number one is to read the card carefully especially the uh, topic sentence, okay? So step one, read the card carefully, especially the topic sentence, read this twice. Okay, so let's do that now. So Talk about an important choice that you had to make in your life. One more time. Talk about an important choice that you had to make in your life. So this is not a current choice. This is not a future decision. This is a past decision that you had to make in your life. Okay. Uh, you should say when you made this choice, what you had to choose between... Okay, so multiple options, whether you made a good choice or a bad choice, uh, how you felt when you were making the choice, not after, but while you were making the choice. You will have one minute to prepare what you are going to say, and you will have two minutes to speak. That's on the card. That's not so important. Okay, all right, so we've read this uh, twice. And now the next step, step two, is identify what category you are looking at and the tense of the question. So remember what I said that uh, one thing is for sure, you're going to get a cue card that will be about a person, an object, a place, an event, or an idea. Um, in this case, uh, what is the category? Um, is it an event or is it an idea? Okay. So Kyber says, I think maybe it's an event. And Kurush says, I think it's a tense. Yeah, it's more of an event than I an idea because it's actually happening. It's something that you're doing. Okay. So the way that you can decide whether it's an event or an idea, which one it's more so, um, is to think about, is it something that I'm doing or is it something that I'm thinking? Okay. Because that can be confusing sometimes. So uh, to figure out whether you are talking about an idea or event, ask yourself, Is this something that I'm thinking or doing? If you are doing it, it's an event. Okay, so keep that in mind. And in this case, you're doing this, right? Because you're making a choice. So it's more of a, an event than I, an idea. When you're making a choice, you're doing it. So it's an event. If you're thinking it, then it's an idea. <laughs> a choice is an idea until you put it into action, at which time it becomes an event, okay? 
Um, so it's more of an event than an idea. All right. So in this case, it's an event and it's past tense, right? It's something that you did plus past tense, which means you need to use past, present perfect. This is the grammar that you're going to use. Uh, you're going to use some past perfect as well, hopefully, in this description, okay? Now also, it's a choice. So because you're talking about a choice, what other grammar do you think will come into play here? So what other grammar are you going to really have to focus on here and pay attention to? Because it's a choice. So past perfect, present perfect, simple past, past progressive, sure. Those are all given. It's a choice. So a very likely type of grammar that you're going to use is what? And it should pop into your mind. Yeah, conditional. Very good, Maksud. Absolutely conditional, right? If I did this, if I had done that. So you should be thinking conditional and you should be thinking real plus unreal. When I did this, had I done that, okay? So real and unreal in this case, okay? Because the choice that you made will be the real condition. The choice that you could have made would be your unreal condition, okay? So you're thinking both real and unreal condition here as well. So that information is quick, okay? It's coming to your mind fast. So now you've identified these parts. That's fantastic. Okay, and this is all happening in the one minute. So this is quick, okay? This is quick. Um, <clears throat> all right, now when you're talking about an event, uh, what should you include when discussing an event? Okay, and don't think about the questions, think about the statements. Okay, think about the statements, not the questions. Of course, the question is when, but think about the statement instead, time. Okay, so Abhishek says time, attendees, yeah, who was at this event, right? It's in your decision, the reason, the result. Very good, Abhishek. Experience and activities. Now, especially for this one, because I think a lot of students, if they got this cue card about an important choice they had to make, they would say the choice, they would say what happened, and then they would run out of ideas very quickly. Okay, so sometimes it's easy to run out of what you're going to say and get into repetition. Okay, so for some questions like this one, it's easy to run out of ideas and just get into a lot of repetition. This results in low band scores. Okay, to avoid this, always keep in mind the components to describe the category as listed above. Okay, so I think here what could really happen, and I'm sure what would happen to a lot of students is they would just say the choice, they would say what happened, and then that would be it. And then they would forget that, hey, maybe I can talk about some other people that my choice affected. Maybe I can talk a little bit about the reason for my choice. Maybe I can give a little bit more about the results of that choice or an alternative choice, another choice that I could have made. And maybe then I can get a little bit more into the experiences and activities that are connected to that choice, right? So... Keep that in mind. All right, so nicely done, Abhishek. Thank you for that very thorough list of what is included when talking about the event. Okay, uh, let's um, move activities a little bit because the order is important here to here. Okay. All right, so now the next step, step three, of course, is come up with a couple of, 
uh, let's not say a couple, let's say two to three ideas um, to answer. Uh, they should be unique. And, uh, well, let's not say unique. I think that confuses. They should be original. So that means not all students are thinking about the same idea. They should be original and easy to talk about. Okay. <coughs> all right, students. So give me some ideas for this. Okay. Uh, here's the question one more time. Okay. So talk about an important choice that you had to make in your life. You should say when you made this choice, what you had to choose between, whether you made a good choice. So give me three ideas for choices. It's an important choice. Okay. The, that word important is key. All right. Let's see what you're coming up with. Okay. Visualize when you're doing this. So Nick Haim says, choose a book to write an academic essay to pass an exam. Okay. So I'm going to say, uh, choose a book for an essay. Okay. Uh, that is uh, Nick Hames. Sure. Um, Kyber says, choose a major for university. All right. That's good. Zen Frederick says, pursuing biotechnology at Christ College Singapore. Sure, Zen, that would be like choosing your major for and university. Okay. All right. Rahul Preet says, buying a bicycle or a motorbike for 10th grade to commute to school and college. Okay, so bike or motorbike. Okay, that's an interesting one. Some good ideas there. Uh, Roshni Kunte says, pursue education or a job after high school. Sure. That's a good one. All right. Uh, Pachu Yadav says choosing a partner, but choosing a partner for what Pachu? Uh, so choosing a partner for a project, choosing a business partner, right? So there's a lot there. So choosing a business partner or choosing a life partner, right? I uh, was saying yes to the question of marriage. So those could be uh, good ones. All right. Um, Abdul Hodi says studying abroad or at home. Okay. Uh, let's be specific. So studying abroad in the U.S., or at home. Okay, that's a big one. That's a good one. All right. Okay, good. So I see that there kind of are some repeats there as well. Uh, marriage or further study by Pratima. That's another good one. Yeah. Um, and we're going to stop there. So I'm going to just number these and then we'll take some votes on which one to do today. I think uh, a lot of these are good ideas. Okay. So a lot of these are good ideas. Now, when you vote, okay. So when you vote for which one to do today, again, think about these two important questions. Is it original? So does that mean that not everybody who is sitting the IELTS exam uh, this turn and getting this question will choose the same answer. So is it kind of original? Can you make it original? And the second question that's maybe even more important is, can you talk about it? So is it easy for you to talk about for two minutes? That's what you should be thinking when you decide which one. Now you don't need this many choices. You can just have three in the real exam, but here we have a bigger group. So we have more of them. Okay. So, one, uh, two, 
three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight choices here. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have eight choices. Uh, let me know which one you think would be the most satisfactory. So Maksud says five. Kyber votes for two. Maksud only one vote. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Three, seven, four, two. So four seems to be quite a popular choice. Okay. And seven seems to be a very popular choice as well. Um, great. Okay, students. Okay. Uh, I didn't miss bike or motorbike. That's uh, that's number three. So there's just an extra comma there. Um, okay, students. Two looks like a popular one as well. Choosing a major for university. All right. So the two very popular, three very popular one is... Um, uh, ba, ba, bum. So the very popular ones are two and four. So what you're telling me is that choosing a major for university, that's popular. Uh, job or higher education after high school, that's very popular. And studying abroad in the U.S. or at home is a very popular one as well. Okay, cool. That's great. So we can stop voting. Um... Which one of these three do you think is the easiest to talk about? Two, four, or seven? So this is a new vote. New vote, students. I just want to see what you're thinking here. Which one do you think is the easiest to talk about? Two, four, or seven? Two, four, or seven? Which one do you think is the easiest to talk about? Please answer that one for me. Okay. Realistically, try to visualize, try to picture your speaking, try to picture what you're going to say. Okay. All right. So a lot of you are saying two is easy. Um, some of you are saying four is easy and a few of you are saying seven is easy. If I had to rank order these from what I've seen students um, say, okay, I would say for easy. Uh, maybe number four, then number seven, and then number two. I actually think that uh, it's quite challenging for students to talk about the major because if they're talking about biochemistry uh, versus microbiology, I think you're getting into a difficult topic, okay? If you're talking about chemistry versus physics um, or psychology versus sociology, I think you're getting into a difficult topic. So I think two is definitely more difficult than four or seven. Okay. Um, now let's take another vote. Which one do you think is most original? Okay. So this is what you should practice at home when you're getting ready and doing these cue cards. So which one do you think is most original? Choosing. So which one, let me ask you this way. Which one do you think the least number of students would pick? for this cue card, okay? Choosing a major for university, job or higher education, or going abroad to study or at home. What do you think? A lot of you are saying maybe seven, maybe two. Um, okay, I would probably say that the uh, most common one, it's very difficult actually, I think they could all be popular uh, topics, but I think probably number two would be the most popular. So likely it would be something like uh, maybe seven, four, two. That would be my guess. Okay. Again, these ones would be very kind of equal. These ones are very equal. Okay. Or sorry, these ones are very equal. All right. So um, I definitely think uh, two would not be the best choice if you're thinking of these three. Um, I think you'd be better off with four or seven. Uh, we got a lot of votes for seven, so let's do seven for this class. But then students, I challenge you to try different answers. So uh, see which one, okay? Uh, we'll do seven for this class. Um, but uh, one really good practice for home when you're getting ready for your exam is to try your top two, top three choices 
and see which ones work better for you. Okay, so what we're going to choose here is um, uh, study abroad in the US or at home. Okay, now here's a tip uh, for studying the speaking part two at home. Try your top two or three choices and see which one you feel you gave the best answer for. Okay, this will open up your eyes to choosing the best possible responses to maximize your score. Okay, so uh, everybody get that? So does everybody kind of get um, what I'm saying with that? Okay. So everybody gets what I'm saying with this. So at home, try, definitely try. It's a really, really good strategy to practice at home. Just so you're like, oh, I thought it'd be easy for me to talk about choosing my major. But after trying it, I realized that was really challenging and it worked way better for me to just talk about whether or not I should do work or go for more study after high school. Okay, so try that out. All right, so now we've figured, okay, studying abroad. So now our next step in our preparation time, and this is happening quickly, students, is write down some usable notes in the order of the components of the category. Okay, so in this case, it was time, attendees, um, the reason, the activities results, and that's actually not as good as it could be. It should be attendees coming after reason. So time, reason, attendees. Let's go that way. So time, reason, attendees, activities, and experience. feeling, okay, and uh, outcome here, okay, all right, so um, this is important, okay, this order of time, reason, attendees, activities, outcome, experience, uh, that's really important, you want to keep the same order when you're coming up uh, with um, the uh with the responses yeah raf raf you're in the class i got your email by the way as well and i'm really glad that you succeeded on the ielts this time so congratulations i got your email as well hey raf raf if you're up for it send me um your experience and we can put that testimonial on our website with all of the other great testimonials as well so just send me an email uh, raf raf and we'd love to use your testimonial so it's great I'm happy that you also decided to share that experience in today's live class, that's cool. Okay, um, so we wanna write down some usable notes. That means notes that will actually help us give extra information in the two minute uh, speaking, okay? So let's do that, let's do that, okay? So give me some notes, students. So our choice was uh, to study abroad or at home. Uh, when did we have to make that choice? Give me at least one piece of note for time. Okay, Abhishek says Jan 19th. All right. After graduation. Sure. Um, give me the reason. So give me a usable note for reason. Okay. We're just gonna do one or two notes for all of this right now. So um, give me the reason for your choice to study abroad versus locally. 
So here you're thinking about the why. Okay, why? So why do you want to study at home or abroad? What's your reasons? Okay, abroad. So again, remember, you're making a comparison here. Abroad, better education. Um, at home, it's cheaper. Okay? Now remember your quantitative information, half. Okay? Uh, living cost, for example, or tuition, right? So those are your notes. All right? Uh, why else would you study in the U.S.? So you have better education. That's something that you'll remember. Um, okay, Flower says, says culture and language. Good. Okay. Now, notice how my notes are very short form. U.S. culture and ing, right? So, culture and English. Sure. Okay. Now, locally... You probably don't need to write local. This is just to help us in the live class. Family and friends. Okay, good. So that's an important one, right? The reason. Okay. Now, attendees. So who is involved in studying abroad or locally? Okay. So when you think about attendees, think about people. This is just your notes and entities. Okay. So this is where you'd want to say the specific uh, university, okay? So what would be a university in the U.S.? Uh, some of you are writing ACCA at the U.K., but let's, uh, let's go with one in the U.S. So let's go with MIT, okay? The Institute of Technology, it's one of the best ones in the world. So you're learning at MIT, sure. Um, who else is involved? MIT engineering, sure. And who else is involved? Who else is involved? Uh, family, teachers, friends, that's right. So fam, friend, teacher, homestay, if you're doing homestay parents, sure, that could be another one, right? Okay, so those are the people involved. Now, um, the activities. Okay, um, what are the activities? All right. And it might seem funny because if you're sitting the IELTS exam in your own country and this is something that will happen in the future, it hasn't happened yet. Um, but hey, the examiner doesn't know that, right? It's possible that you went and you came back and you decided to do it differently, right? So... Uh, who knows? The examiner won't judge you as long as you're using past tense, okay? So the activities would be exams, right? Visa, you definitely need a student visa to get it as well. Admission, okay? Better education, good. Okay, so travel, all right. Okay, good. And um, the outcome, the experience. Okay, so a little bit on that. So the outcome and the experience. Couple of notes for outcome and the experience. Okay, there. Now, see, you have a lot of good ideas around it. This is already uh, giving a, um, a, a an indication that you've picked a good topic. Okay, so culture shock, yeah. Lonely, excited, okay, so there's a couple of notes there. Okay, good, so uh, you're getting these done fast. Now, when you have picked a good topic, you're going to be quick to do this, and then you can go to your next step, and this is a very important step. This will be our step four now, is uh, write down your first sentence. 
Okay, very important. So when the examiner says, uh, please begin speaking, you can start right away with an accurate sentence. All right. Um, so give me your first sentence. Give me your first sentence, okay, that you can start with here, all right? Give me your first sentence. And for your first sentence, it's always a good idea to refer back to the topic statement. Talk about an important choice that you had to make in your life. So Zen says, I... Uh, chose to pursue my postgraduate degree in computer science at MIT in 2019. Okay, um, so one of the most important decisions I ever had to make, right? Uh, Kuru says, leaving my hometown and my family to study abroad uh, could have been one of the most vital decisions that I've made in my life in 2019. Uh, after I got my passport, good, Karush, good start. Watch your grammar. Students, this is where you want to do a lot of repetition. Uh, Peya Basak says, I would like to talk about a life-changing decision of mine which paved the way for my bite future studying in the U.S. Uh, Peya, don't want to like to talk about it. You have to talk about it. It's the assignment. So just start more directly, Peya. So a life-changing decision which paved the road for a bright future for me was studying abroad in the U.S. in 2019 of January. Okay, so very directly, Peya. Okay, Makta says, last summer my professor suggested for me to continue my studies at MIT, which brought about the most important decision that I ever made in 2019. So Makta, get right into answering the question. It's very important for the examiners to hear you directly answer the question in your first sentence. Okay, super, super important. Bister says, 12 months ago when I finished secondary school uh, in Bulgaria, I chose to continue my education in either Bulgaria or the U.S., and this was one of my most important decisions so far in my life. Yeah, so emphasize the topic statement, students, in that first um, <clears throat> response, in that first sentence, okay? It's very important, very, very important, okay? Emphasize the topic statement in your opening sentence. Super important, okay? So, one of the most important and difficult decisions I've ever had to make in my life was just this past year when I graduated uh, school and I was thinking about studying at my local university or going abroad to MIT. Okay, so again, use the topic and reveal the direction of your response right away. Uh, repeat after me. One of the most important and difficult decisions I've ever had to make in my life was just this past year when I graduated school and I was thinking about studying at my local university or going abroad to MIT. Okay, most people will know MIT, so you don't have to explain it there. All right, so you open with that, and now you're ready to continue on. All right. So, of course, you're following the logic of your notes and of the elements that we discussed. So, the first is the reason, right? So, here we have the time, January 19th, and then we have the reason, abroad better education, um, 
culture and English home. It's cheaper, half the cost, and you have your friends and family to support you. So give me the next sentences that follow here. Okay, so give me the next sentences. And I promise to read the responses of different students. So what do you think would be some good ideas to include here, revealing the reasons for this decision? Okay. So Nick Ham says, I remember it was June when I unexpectedly got 7.5 in the IELTS. Uh, Pea says, two years back, just after graduating, I had to choose between studying in my country of Bangladesh or MIT in the U.S., which was really challenging for me. Okay, Pea, that's a good opening sentence. So now we're looking for the following sentences here, students. And of course, you're thinking of the reasons for this choice. Okay. The reasons for the choice. So keep going. I don't want to spoil it for you. I want you to tell me what you think would make sense here. Tamonish says, I chose to change my major in 2019. I'm not sure where you're going with that, Tamonish, but if you keep going, maybe it will make more sense. Tanwisi says, Nandi says, this choice had been unexpectedly hard since I had to choose between either better education or to live closer to my family. Very good, Tanwisi. Nice. Okay, that works. All right. Saravdeep says, the choice was a really confusing one. Charlie said, says, actually, my professor encouraged me to study abroad. Luckily, I got Band-Aid and IELTS, which was good enough. Okay. Zaid says, although studying at home is cheaper, I had to choose MIT because of its high educational quality. Okay, good. Rajveer Singh says, it was an important decision at the time as I had just graduated and I was looking for options for my post-graduation. Okay. Kaushal says, for me, choosing the U.S. for my degree was the best decision I ever made. Okay, you're far ahead there, Kushal. You're jumping towards experience. And the challenge, Kushal, is that if you say that now, uh, what's going to happen is you're going to start repeating yourself. And oftentimes when students talk about their experience, how they felt about their decision so early, then they just keep repeating. And it was a really good choice. I'm very happy about the decision that I made. It was the greatest choice of my life. And it's like, okay, okay, but you're just repeating. So you want to follow the steps of um, the time, the reason, the attendees. And at the end, you want to get into your feeling about it and so on, okay? So that you avoid repetition, okay? So um, I would write here something like, um, since... I had been uh, an, a top student in my school. MIT gave me conditional um, acceptance into their engineering program. And of course, as one of the top uh, schools in the world, not only would my learning be outstanding, but I would also, or I could also gain valuable cultural and language experience. On the other hand, I also, I knew that this meant both leaving my family behind and having to pay at least twice as much for school, not to mention living expenses. Okay, so that would be talking about the reasons for this difficult and important decision and what your 
uh, choosing between. So one of, repeat after me. Again, students, lots of practice here. So repeat after me. One of the most important and dif difficult decisions I've ever had to make in my life was just this past year when I graduated from school and I was thinking about studying at my local university or going abroad to MIT. Since I had been a top student in my school, MIT gave me a conditional acceptance into their engineering program. And of course, as one of the top schools in the world, not only would my learning be outstanding, but I could also gain valuable cultural and language experience. On the other hand, I knew that this meant both leaving my family behind and having to pay at least twice as much for school, not to mention living expenses. All right. Okay. So let's keep going. Give me some more uh, information here. Give me some more information. Okay. So <clears throat> nevertheless, okay. Uh, give me your sentences here. I'm going to write a little bit students to move the class along, but I want you to give me your sentences as well. How would you continue from here? Okay. How would you continue from here? So nevertheless, All right, let's see. Rahul Preet says, after receiving counseling from my parents and teachers who pushed me to pursue my education in the U.S., I agreed. Very nice, Rahul Preet. Rahul Preet, you wrote almost exactly what I wrote, but in your own words. That's fantastic. Okay, uh, Nick Haim says, after lots of thinking as well as considering many aspects, I had decided to study abroad in the U.S. as I can get more benefits while studying at MIT rather than staying at my local school. Okay, very good, Nick Haim. What are those benefits, right? A better job, higher salary, more international experience. That's exciting. Use the notes, use the questions, but you're definitely on the right track, Nick Haim. Very, very good. Okay, very, very nice. Well done, well done. Good students. Uh, when we're kind of reading each other's minds, it means that you're doing a good job. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Ton Wissi says, nevertheless, after some convincing and gaining my parents' support, I had gone abroad for my education. I was very excited to go to a very good school, but a bit sad to leave my family behind. Now, yeah, that's good, Ton Wissi. If you're in this IELTS exam talking to the examiner, of course, and you haven't yet gone to MIT, you can say that I'm currently taking this exam to pass the language requirement for MIT. So you're still in the process, but you already made the decision to go to MIT, right? So the decision is done. So it could easily be that you're still in the process to carry out the steps necessary for this decision as well, right? Okay, we haven't gotten to that part yet. Now, if I'm stuck, then this is where I want to look at the cards, okay, and look at my notes. So look at the card and look at the notes. Make sure that you're answering all the questions on the card, okay? So uh, what do I need? What are my requirements? Exams, visa, travel, okay? Those are my requirements. Uh, what are my feelings that I'm worried about? Culture shock, being lonely. But at the same time, I'm kind of 
excited as well. So that's great. So here I look at the card, make sure that I'm nailing all of the questions so I can get a full mark for this. Uh, whether you made a good choice, how you felt when you were making the choice. Okay, um, I don't think we've answered those clearly yet, so let's do those using the last pit bit of notes. Okay, so, and you can continue like this. I'm currently in the process of managing all of the requirements to fulfill this choice, such as sitting this IELTS exam right now. And I'm not totally sure yet whether or not I've made the right choice. I am sure that time will tell. This is a nice expression for you. So I am sure that time will tell. Time will tell means time will reveal this. Initially, I felt very nervous and excited to make this decision. Recently, I've been feeling a bit anxious about becoming homesick, but I'm sure that this will be a great adventure or let's use a nice expression here will be the adventure of a lifetime and I don't regret choosing to study in the US rather than here Okay, so there is uh, our completed answer, more or less, students. And I know many of you have been working hard to get these ideas out, and that's great. A lot of you are getting some very synonymous ideas out into the chat as me. Pooja says, despite the financial assistance, it was quite challenging for me to mingle with the crowd. In fact, there were times I sat isolated with just my diaries as days went Things were not as bad as I had expected. That's good, Pooja. So you're discussing it as if it's a past event, okay? All right, good. I'm talking about the decision as a past event, but the actual event of studying in the U.S. hasn't happened yet in my case, okay? All right, so let's uh, look at the question one more time. Make sure that we tackle it and answer all of the elements of the question, here it is. So talk about an important choice that you had to make in your life, when you made this choice, what you had to choose between, whether you made a good choice, how you felt when you were making the choice. Here is the answer. The examiner says, okay, your two minutes begins now. Please begin speaking. Uh, let's start speaking. Repeat after me. One of the most important and difficult decisions I've ever had to make in my life was just this past year when I graduated school and I was thinking about studying at my local university or going abroad to MIT. Since I'd been a top student in my school, MIT gave me a conditional acceptance into their engineering program and of course, as one of the top schools in the world, not only would my learning be outstanding, but I could also gain valuable cultural and language experience. On the other hand, I knew that this meant both leaving my family behind and having to pay at least twice as much for school, not to mention living expenses. Nevertheless, thinking about my bright future, I decided to pursue MIT. 
In order to achieve this goal, I had to search for a homestay family in the U.S. and explain my plans to my parents, siblings, and friends. This was very emotional and challenging. I'm currently in the process of managing all of the requirements to fulfill this choice, such as sitting this IELTS exam right now, and I'm not totally sure yet whether or not I've made the right decision. I am sure that time will tell. Initially, I felt very nervous and excited to make this choice. Recently, I've been feeling a bit anxious about becoming homesick, but I'm sure that this will be the adventure of a lifetime and I don't regret choosing to study in the U.S. rather than here. And roughly there, the examiner will say, okay, your two minutes is up. Please pass back the card, and now we will continue with part three. Part three, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. And part three will be tomorrow, students, at this time. So speaking part three, questions related to the topic of part two make sure you're in tomorrow's class for those part three questions where we'll get into them in more detail pay hey, i'm glad you like that uh, students if you enjoyed this class you want lots more hd videos do yourself a favor spend a few dollars money well invested join the premium package at aehelp.com for academic alts and galtshelp.com for general outs. That's it for me for today. Much love to all of you. Stay healthy, stay strong. I'm Adrian signing out from Budapest. Bye for now, everyone.